Continuing now with our lead story, Hillary Clinton testifying before the House Committee investigating the Benghazi terror attack. Joining us from Miami, the purveyor, BernardGoldberg.com, Mr. Goldberg. First of all, do you think my analysis and the talking points and Catherine Herridge's reportage in the A Block was fair? Yeah, I do. I do. You made a, a point in the, in the talking points that uh, she didn't take, uh, Mrs. Clinton didn't take a full control of security measures, and she didn't. We learned today, and by the way, I think you concluded that her, her position basically was, it's not my job. We learned today from Congressman Pompeo of Kansas that there were 600 requests for added security, and yet the number of security people on the ground in Benghazi was the same before the requests were made as after the requests were made. Somebody made a mistake. Somebody made a mistake, and I think you captured that in, in your talking points. Um, Did let you me just see, add one thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you oh, see well, any... one thing very quickly? Go ahead. She, Mrs. Clinton, had a very interesting strategy on, on that matter of security. She said, first of all, it's it wasn't my doing; it was the doing of, and she used this term over and over and over again, security professionals. But then she said the security professionals were courageous people, competent people, hardworking people. It's as if if you criticize the security professionals, you're criticizing the American flag. So you can't criticize them, according to Mrs. Clinton, but you can't criticize her either because it wasn't her job, it was a security professional's job. Well, who is responsible then? Nobody if you was can't blame her or, or hold her accountable okay. and you can't hold the security professionals accountable, who is responsible? Did you see any remorse, and then I asked this to Catherine, did you see any remorse while she was talking about herself, Hillary Clinton? It's easy to show remorse for families of uh, the dead Americans, come on, anybody can do that. But what she was talking about herself, and I was watching it closely, I was looking for a little bit of, you know what, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have done it differently. I didn't see any of that, did you? Well, I didn't hear any of that. Whatever we saw, we didn't hear that. I think Mrs. Clinton thinks that she's in the crosshairs of the Republican Party, uh, not just of this committee, but of the Republican Party that doesn't want to see her as the next president of the United well, States. Well, she's, so right right she's right on that regard. She is. She's right there. Well, it's one thing to say she's in the crosshairs for political reasons. It's quite another to say she's in the crosshairs because somebody screwed up. And, and if it wasn't her and you can't criticize the security professionals who made a mistake, who got punished, who lost does. their job, the answer is nobody. You know, most human beings, and I'm, I'm sure you're guilty of this, and I am uh, as well, rationalize things, right? We, we do something bad, and then we try yeah. to make, well, you know, so Br right. Benny did something worse. So, you know, you know, that kind of thing. What she has done, in my opinion, and this is important because she's running for president, if we're some other politician, I wouldn't care, is that she has allowed her, allowed her indignation of people who dislike her to overwhelm the fact that she's mortal, that she didn't handle the situation well, that she should have been uh, concerned about security in Libya, hot, one of the hottest spots in the world. But she didn't even think about that because it's, she's the victim. She's portraying herself as a victim. Right, right. I, I think if she if she did what you suggest, it would have been a huge help for her. Yeah. I don't think she was hurt. I don't think she was hurt, by the way. But I think that would have been a big help because she would have she would have come off as human. She would have come off as compassionate. You know, I wish I had done something differently. I, I, I lose. Yes, I do lose sleep over that. But part of it she, is on I think me, she's going she, to be hurt somewhat that. in the independent ranks because you know the two sides I yes. pointed out are polarized because she does that, she that's did a very not come point. across as a leader. She came across as somebody very, goes, ah. You know, it wasn't my job. It was, a, it was a Freddie Prince. Not my job. Not my job. Yeah. You know, look, it, look I, I, think, I think this hearing was a Rorschach test. Whatever you went in with, you came out with. If you think the Republicans had her in the crosshairs yesterday, you, you have it tonight. If you think that, that she screwed up in Benghazi and you thought that yesterday, you think that tonight. So, so nobody's going to move on either side when they're already entrenched. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think those people who haven't made up their minds yet 
may be influenced by this, but don't forget, they didn't watch the hearings. They're only going to get bits and pieces on, on evening newscasts and tomorrow morning, and I don't know that it's going to be enough to influence very many people. All right, Bernie Goldberg, everybody ahead. Waters asking the folks about the Benghazi controversy. Also up next, now the police officer gunned down the street by a so-called non-violent offender. It's awful. We'll be right back.